Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video on counting methods, we're going to look at examples of product tables in two-part tasks. In the previous video, I've already gone over what a product table is and what a two-part task is, so if you're not sure what those are, please go back and watch the introduction video on counting methods of one-part and two-part tasks. If not, if you're ready, we're going to jump right into some examples. Our first example, and I do put the disclaimer on here, that I have never participated in a debate team, and I think that if you have, it will be fairly obvious that I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I do enjoy just making things up, so enjoy. The debate team needs two people to attend a debate. One person is the chief debater and the other is the fact finder. If the debate team has seven members, Anna, Bob, Christopher, Don, Evelyn, Frank, and Gary, and all of the teammates are eligible to participate, how many ways can two people be chosen? So we're going to represent all the possible outcomes in a product table, which I have it set up here. So we have our chief debater as the rows and the fact finder as the columns. And we're gonna fill in the table accordingly. Now, if there's something that doesn't make sense, like right off the bat, Anna cannot be both the chief debater and the fact finder. So we just leave that cell blank. We don't put anything in there. We go to the next one, we put A, B, indicating Anna is the chief debater and Bob is the fact finder. A, C means Anna is the chief debater and Christopher is the fact finder and so on and so forth. There's the completed table. That was so much easier. So you can see here all the different possibilities. You'll notice that the diagonal here is left blank because that's where the name repeats. So we don't want to put anything in there because that wouldn't make sense in the context of the problem. Okay, so now based on this, let's answer some questions. It initially said how many different combinations are possible. So let's answer that question. This thing is called a product table. Product, that's the answer of a multiplication question. So let's make this a multiplication question. We're going to look at the number of entries in any row. And it looks like the top row there's six and the next row there's six and the next row there's six. You know, how many rows are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means the number of possible outcomes is 6 times 7, which is 42. So there's 42 ways that two people could be chosen out of these seven people. List the ways that teammate A can be selected to participate in the debate. Now, we want to be very careful here with the language. This asked how many, but this says list the ways. When we're listing the ways, that means we actually have to formally write it out. We're just going to use the, the first initials. We're not going to write out Anna a bunch of times. So when we list them, we usually list them in braces. And we would say, okay, well, here's Anna here. And where else do we see Anna? Oh, we see her here. So we're going to list these out. We're going to say Anna Bob, Anna Christopher, Anna Dawn, Anna Evelyn, I think, Anna Frank, Anna Gary. Those are all of the possibilities where Anna is the chief debater. Now we need to kind of switch these all, which would indicate that she is the fact finder. So that'd be B A C A D A. E A, F A, and last but not least, G A. Okay, so there's the list. Next question, what is the probability that A will be selected to participate in the debate? So if we're going to get into just a touch of statistics here, probability is determined by the number of successes over the possible outcomes. The number of successes, well, we have them listed right above here in letter B. The successes are when Anna is chosen for something. How many successes are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And possible outcomes, well, we did that originally. That's 42. So this is 12 out of 42, which would be 2 out of 7. I do not have my calculator handy, so we're just going to leave it as a fraction 2 over 7. Okay. Oops, this was supposed to be a D. There we go. How many ways could a team have A or D selected to participate in the debate? So A or D means a, a success in this case would be if the particular combination includes the letter A or the letter D. So we already know there's 12 um, from the letter A. Now where do we see D? Here's D's here. Now I'm not going to include that AD here because I've already included AD when I counted the Anna Dawn combination. Now that I'm focusing on Dawn, I don't need to count it twice because that's going to count too many times. So now I have one, two, three, four, five. This is where Dawn is the fact finder. What about Dawn being the chief debater? There's one, two, three, four, five that I haven't already counted, right? I want to be really careful that I don't count something twice. Um, if you don't like this, you could just have circled everything individually. So you could just count like this if you want to, if that makes more sense. And then you really, really won't have to worry about double counting anyone. Either way, whether you 
count individually or you kind of use the shortcut given that we've already counted a it would be 12 plus 10 there would be 22 ways that a or d could be selected the last question here how many ways could the team have a and d selected to participate in the debate a and d so now we have to be really careful with the language or meant one or the other but and means they both must be present Okay, so the number of ways that A and D could be selected, that means that a success is seeing both the letters A and D. So I see one here, and the only other place I see it is here. There are only two, two ways that both A and D could be selected. So we have to be very careful when it comes to the language used. Okay, how would this question change if the goal was to see how many ways two of the club, mem club members could be selected for the debate where it doesn't, there's no roles, it's just either you're selected or you're not. In this case, still one person can't be both people, so we're not gonna include Anna twice. But what this means is that if we put here A, B, and here B, A, this is the same combination. In this case, it's the same, and we only include any combination one time. So we would have to decide which one we want to keep. Maybe we keep the AB, but really it doesn't matter. One thing about all of these counting methods is that you're going to hear a lot about order matters versus order doesn't matter. When order doesn't matter, then we don't take repetitions. We, we only list each unique individual thing. So when we go to fill this table in, it's going to be really interesting. Let's see what happens. We have AB, AC, AD, a, E, A, F, and A, G. Now the next row, remember anything that's already listed. So I already have a combination including A and B. So this one's blank. This one I don't include because this is B, B. So we're going to just erase those. But new is B, C. I haven't, don't have a combination including B and C yet. B, D, B, E, B, F, B, G. And the next one, we don't include C, A because I already have C, A right here. I don't include B, C, B because I have B, C and then CC no, so that we would start with CD, CE, CF, and CG. For the D, we would skip over this one, this one, this one, and this one, because you can find AD, BD, and CD, and then DD we don't include. So then we would have DE, DF, and DG. In the E column, in the E row, we're gonna skip all the way to EF and EG, and the only thing, the only one left that hasn't been included yet is FG. So you see this kind of like makes a triangle. It's just the upper half is all we would include here, which is kind of interesting. Um, that's when order doesn't matter. So we have to be really, really careful about the language being used in the question. Okay, one more example. Determine the number of different possible results when two fair dice are rolled. For distinction, we're just gonna say one die is blue and the other is white. So here's the table. When we fill it in, the first one's indicating what we roll on blue, the second one white. So one, 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 two. Notice here that we do include the one, one because we are talking about two different dice being rolled. So again, the context is really important and you need to make sure that you understand whether or not we can include the repetition. I'm sure I have this done already, there it is. Okay, we're gonna use the combinations to answer the following questions. So it did say how many combinations were possible well, the different combinations here would be below the blue. That would be there's six rows and there's six columns. So the answer would be six times six, which is 36. Decide how many ways the sum of the dice could be nine. So sum refers to we're gonna take the values of the dice and add them together. That would be, let's see here, six and three adds up to nine, five and four, four and five, three and six. So it looks like there are four different ways. It does not ask us to list them, it just asks how many. So there are four. What is the probability the dice will show a sum of nine? That would be four out of, right, because we determined the successes is four, out of the total possibilities, 36. That's one out of nine, which I believe is like 11%, but just to be safe, we'll say one out of nine. Determine the number of ways the dice that, sorry, determine the number of ways the sum of the dice is between, uh, wait, I forgot a word here, is between four and six. Okay, well, four is three and one, two and two, one and three, is between four and six. Five would be these, 
you can see these all make a really nice diagonal, right? And then six is these. Determine the number of ways. So there's three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there's 12 ways that the sum of the dice could be between four and six. What is the probability? The dice will show a sum that is between four and six. So again, the successes is there's 12 possibilities out of 36. That would be one out of three, which is like 33%. So these have been two examples of using product tables. Now let's quickly just talk about the advantages and disadvantages of product tables. So the advantage is it makes the information clear and it organizes the information really well. However, it can be confusing. We need all possibilities when order doesn't matter, um, or we need to eliminate repeats when order Sorry, when order matters, sorry. We need all the possibility when order matters. We eliminate the repeats when order does not matter. Also, the wording of the questions can be really tricky. If it says and, we need to list, take into account both people or things. If it says or, a success is defined by one or the other or both being included. Other disadvantages, it takes a long time. I mean, mine were already done, but if you had to do it by hand, it took a long time and it can take up a lot of space. And the biggest disadvantage of all is that it only works for two events. It doesn't work for three events or four events or more than that. So luckily there are other strategies that we can use and those are discussed in other videos. But this was just examples using the product tables. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for stopping by.